It's not adding on to anything else. Nope. So can you tell us your name? I am Leslie Fogg Stanley, two bears. The Fogg is my mom's last name. And I really couldn't understand how she put up with my dad, she carried me, and her name was nowhere in my lineage. So I dropped my middle name and took Fogg mm -hmm. as my middle name. Um, so I am Leslie Fogg, Stanley, my father, and then two bears for my husband. The things that have really concerned me about human beings is our disconnect and our inability to work within relationship. My mom tells you that she's half native, she's actually all native. And I connect more with her history than she does. So I go back to the land and to nature and to living life simply and to interacting with people on a one-to-one -one and who you are. I have worked with people with substance use and psychiatric disabilities for most of my adult life. I didn't get a college degree, but I took what I would call homeless studies, whatever explained society in a way that I could understand why homelessness, why disenfranchisement, why disconnect, what was it that made people not be able to live within themselves, and truth, not, not the way we wish it was, but what is the truth? How, how can you get to the place you want to be if your path is based on myth or false desires or misinformation or prejudice or whatever it is other than the truth and it has driven me up a wall. Working with people with the disabilities I have a friend who is also Native, and we have done a lot of discussion about, I guess philosophy, you could say, philosophy, religion. And she started working for Yale. And because of that, well, she was in the psychiatric department, Connecticut decided that the recidivism of people with psych and substance use was really high and we had to come up, the, the mental health system had to come up with a way of intersecting that, stopping it. And Michael, her boss, which was also my boss sometimes, was kind of fascinated with the conversations he would hear Patty and I have having. So he asked Patty to develop a program based on native philosophy, native connection, thought. And we did that. It was called the Citizens Project. And through that, I talk in story, I talk in analogy. I was given the task of introducing everybody to themselves. And the first thing I would say to them is, you are perfection. I don't mean that everything you do is right, but inherently you are perfection. And by the time you leave here, you'll be able to look at yourself and say, I am perfection. And as you bring that into yourself, as you begin to understand that, you will work out of the definition of I am perfection, as opposed to I am stupid, I am crazy, I am an addict, I am no good, I am worthless. I am perfection. We ran that program, well, it's still running. And out of all of the people that walked in that door, not a single one failed. Not all of them did what we had hoped that they would do 
but they walked out of that door knowing who they were, why they did what they did. They made a decision to either continue for these reasons with these consequences or to change. Some of them went back to prison, not because they were apprehended, but because they turned themselves in to do prison differently. Some of them went back to the street. We had one in particular who was a raging alcoholic and he would show up regularly and say, I'm still alive and I know what I'm doing. You know? <laughs> I like it. And he would go on his way. Now the program wanted to call in the evaluation part, they wanted to call that a failure. And we were like, nope, 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 nope. It is not up to you to determine the, the failure or success. It's not our lives to tell somebody else who they are and what they want to be and where they're going to go. Our job is to give people a chance to find themselves so that they can determine for themselves what it is they want to do. So I'm known as hardworking woman, woman who cries and that bitch. <laughs> Depending upon where in the process people are. And I retired and I burnt out. I was so glad not to deal with wounded people for a while, but I'm finding now that I miss them. And if you were to ask me what in my life impacted me the most? I would say working with people under the worst circumstances in the world that continue to get up and do whatever they do, be it destructive or beneficial. People who find a story, a myth, that allows them to sit in the spot that they're in and survive until they can begin to unravel that myth and fill it with the truth that leads them forward. And watching people that have no money, no home, nothing on their back, no way of finding anything else and having a disability, a psychiatric or a substance or a combination of the two that does not let them understand reality in any way, shape or form that we see it. And they still get up in the morning and do their thing and show up to class. And I am like, you are perfection. So that, that has been what's led me what has brought me to this part of being broken. Right now, I am so broken and so hurt and so miserable. And I'm just sitting there saying, why, what's going on? And there have been groups coming to me saying, the world is sick and broken and disconnected and hurting. And we have charged you with absorbing some of that pain, some of that confusion, some of that anger, and we're not going to let you fall, but you're going to get pretty down. And right now, I'm holding my faith in, we're not going to let you fall. So that's where I'm sitting now. And I just hope, as my mom said, as you said, we got to connect back with ourselves back with however we determine our power, our sacredness is. I, I don't care whose name you call out. I tell people, your name is Rena. You're also sister. You're also daughter. You're also friend and cousin. You're still Rena. God is Allah. God is goddess, God is the Lord, God is whatever brings you to that understanding. The name doesn't matter. The path you take doesn't matter. But it's when we start fighting among ourselves 
that disconnect us. And that seems to be what we're always about, trying to disconnect from who we are. We'll use any excuse for it, you know. I don't like you, okay, take you know. <laughs> disconnect, you know, what, whatever we can find to keep from connecting to our humanity, mm -hmm. to our connection, to the fact that we are identical to the universe. The universe is larger, but in proportion, we are the stars, we are the moon, we are the vacuum and the air. We are God. We are not God. Only because God cannot be determined and held to this. But I think that we in this form is we are exploring limits. While the universe, God, whatever, spirit does not have that. There are no limits. And I think the universe is exploring itself through us with our limits. It doesn't do that on its own, but it's figured out. These beings down here are part of me, but they have limits. And through that experience, they become a part of me that I am not. So, thanks. <laughs> Um, the first one is um, because all of us are probably influenced by some faith, or you know, small f, to be. But I just wonder to what extent native roots influence your choice of life that second that's the second question and or maybe the first question the second one you said was i thought so important that you were i don't think you used the word destined but that you were um you didn't use vehicle either but i, I don't want to worry about a word for the wounded that there was something in you that was you were you know that was what you were your destiny was. That's what your life was. So you may feel troubled and and dis and weary of the disconnect and all that. But there is something that you were, you know, almost obliged or you mm. felt yourself obliged to do. Okay. The and by the way, closeness mm. to Earth is really yeah. absolutely critical. The native part I do follow very closely, but the very old as soon as the Europeans came over here, they just corrupted the hell out of everything. So mm -hmm. nobody knows who they are and what they're doing. But as my grandmother, my mom's mom, got older, she was more connected to her past, as we usually are, than to the present. And if you sat quietly, and I was the oldest of the grandchildren, except for one who was gone. So Joan is the oldest, but I was around her. Um, as she got older, and if you sat quietly and let her just talk, the more she talked, the further back she went into her history. And so I started researching, and I've always liked philosophy and, and religion and, you know, things like that. So I started on the actual religious prospects, um, um, perceptions and went back as far as I could that was able to be applied in this day and age. And then noticed that every civilization had that same beginning. It was expressed a little bit differently, but it all had a very common core and thread and belief. And my mind said, that's what the universe wanted us to express. And as we grew and explored, we kind of got away from that core. And the further away you get from the core, the more confused you get. But you can't stay in that little spot. That's not our job. Our job is to, to grow and explore and get ourselves into trouble and whatnot. But I want to go home. I wanted to get as close to home as I could get and stay there. 
So yes, the, the, the Native American, but it's more the pagan um, ability to be absorbed and absorb their world is where I go from. I took a course in transformational energy healing. And during that, we did a lot of discussion about molecules and who we are and energy and, and all of that. And I came to an understanding for me that before we're born, we kind of make a contract. We're going to come here to do certain things, to be certain things. And we're going to travel in kind of the same group. All of you I've been with before in some way or another, just, you know. But I was called, I was black, I was Native American, I was woman, I was fat. There were all these things that said, you were a victim, you were a victim, you were a victim, you were a victim. And I said, okay. Evidently, there's some reason that I'm in all of these identities, whether they're put on me or whether I choose them. It's always something that says, you were a victim, you were a victim, you were a victim, you were a victim. My decision is, what do I do with it? Why am I like this? Do I live it so that I suffer the life of being a victim? Do I do it so that I can find my strength in that victimization? Am I a resource to get out of? Or am I a suppressor to keep them down? But because I was the victim, I figured I'm not a suppressor, otherwise I would have been born on the other side of that. And just working my way through different things, I realized that where I lived as a victim showed me how I felt, how my mind worked, how society worked for or against me, and what I needed to do to get myself out, therefore help other people get out. That was Leslie Fogg Stanley Two Bears. <laughs>